of a respectful conversation. Uh, it's me. Hi, I'm your host, King Muse. Um, <laughs> uh, we're back at it again with a new episode. I'm super excited for today's episode because my guest came up with a genius concept and idea um, that will make this episode particularly unique. So uh, my guest today is, introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Autumn Blazon Brown. Um, as Katie mentioned, I came up with a fun idea to talk about baking um, and all the fun things that involve baking, um, like wooden spoons, you know. Um, no, uh, we're also going to talk about being gluten-free and vegan and trying to bake uh, and how it doesn't work. Um, and then <laughs> we're going to, at the same time, bake some cookies. Uh, yeah, we're just going to do that. So, yeah, so on um, why baking why'd you pick like baking of all the things like you know that you care about why baking yeah um so I don't know if you did during quarantine but I was baking a lot at the beginning of it it was cold it was sad it was <laughs> alone so no um I just I did a lot of baking um and I've always liked to bake um I wouldn't say I'm the greatest baker to ever exist uh but I've always liked to try different things, um, bake cakes, bake cookies, bake brownies, um, but especially during quarantine, I was baking a lot of, you know, the banana bread that everyone was making. Um, I didn't do the sourdough thing. Um, I just didn't feel up to that. Uh, but other cookies, brownies, carrot cake, uh, other desserts, I was just a baking fiend. So I figured that was a good thing to talk about. It's relevant to me. I enjoyed doing it. Right. Love that. Yeah, I did not go through that in quarantine just because I've never really been one to bake um, or, like, cook. Like, I can cook. Um, I, my, like, my dad and I made, like, Greek uh, souvlakis, like, last night. Um, but it, like, stresses me out to think about, like, getting ingredients and stuff and like picking a recipe and then having to get everything like on the list of ingredients and then I'm definitely going to need help when I make it like I don't I don't trust myself to just make food um I'm, a, I'm a, like I prefer so I'm a similar way where that I I get stressed out even though I enjoy it um and I prefer cooking actually to baking I think for the most part because you don't need a recipe um but I enjoy baking because I think it's, you get to create fun things, but you need a recipe. And it's like very precise half the time. Uh, obviously with cookies, not so much, but like if you're baking a cake, you need it to rise and you're like, oh no, I didn't put the right things in there. And that's garbage. So I feel you that it's like stressful because you're like, ah, is it going to work? Yeah. yeah, totally. And like math has never been my thing. Chemistry, I was, I hated chemistry in high school. So like I have not, that's probably part of subconsciously why I have not touched baking at all. <laughs> um, but it's because it's fresh in my head, a new episode of Great British Baking Show went up on Netflix last night. Um, and I know you said that you watched that show as well as some other shows. That's my only point of reference for baking <laughs> is that like the episodes of that show that I've seen. I love that show so much. Like, I like cooking shows, and I am a cooking show fiend. Um, but I, the Great British Baking Show is so awesome because it is just so friendly the entire time. It doesn't feel like a competition. Like, the only thing they're winning is, like, a bouquet of flowers and a little, like, cake stand plate with their name on it, and, like, they won. Like, there's no cash prize. Uh, there's only, like, one... I mean, some people have like got like a little more popular, but there's only one winner from the Great British Baking Show who's actually like made it big into the cooking world now, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. Um, so it doesn't feel super like, like I said, like it doesn't feel like super competitive. I don't feel like Gordon Ramsay's screaming at them because uh, they're not. Uh, Paul Hollywood's a little scary sometimes, but mm -hmm. I think he means well. So it just yeah. feels wholesome and then I'm like oh look at them make that cute little cake I should try that and then I do and then it's awful 
people. So uh, kudos to them, you know? <laughs> yeah, that is how I first, I mean, I think I had heard about the show, but I also found it during college when I was like, I want something happier to watch. <laughs> um, and yeah, it is just nice. There's, there's this other podcast. It's like the only other podcast I listen to called Dynamic Banter. And it's just these two like funny comedian guys. And they did a bit one time about like Great British Baking Show and how like the worst thing that like a judge can say to you is like, hmm, it's a little too dry. <laughs> Uh, uh, not enough icing <laughs> it's just like that's it that's the heartbreak yeah. <laughs> it's not like you suck like you oh, failed like, <laughs> hmm, soggy bottom on this pie today yeah soggy bottom I, I, and he's like, oh, I didn't get it last I, you know it wasn't soggy when I made it at home it's like sometimes it does it sometimes it doesn't and you're like okay, yeah. sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't you know <laughs> it's great. That. I wish life could be more like the Great British Baking Show Another great home cook show that I love, which also has cooking, is MasterChef. I don't know if you've seen it oh. ever. That has Gordon Ramsay. Um, so he can be a little scary. Uh, but there's also MasterChef Junior, which is truly, I cry every time I watch it. And it's not because it's sad. Um, it's just so stinking cute. Like, there's, I think they're like between 8 and 12 years old. And they compete on this show and they're cooking and baking, but they like, I, I can't explain like how, I don't know what goes on through their brains, but they like make like these like five star Michelin, Michelin star dishes. Like, I don't understand. They like bake these elaborate things and they're like, yes, I made this like a uh, croque and bouche today for you with this, this trim patate, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you're eight. Um, and also they're standing on stools while they cook. Um, but it's super friendly too, which I like about it because it's the kids' version. So it's always silly, and actually, it's funny to see Gordon Ramsay in that frame as opposed to like yelling at people. He's like so, so, so kind to the kids, and it's just like they get like super excited and have fun. And then obviously, someone has to go home, but they're super supportive about it, and it feels very much like the Great British Baking Show in that sense. Um, and it makes me cry, <laughs> basically. Love that. That's so, yeah. that's right. I forgot. I, way back, way back when I watched MasterChef. Uh, I've never seen the junior one, but I've, I've seen like clips, I think, of it. And it always seems so like, oh. <laughs> it's so worth yeah. it. Even like the regular MasterChef is nice. I mean, it's a little more competitive, obviously, because they're winning a cash prize. But they're all home cooks at the same time. So usually someone really deserving, I feel like, wins. Mm -hmm. uh, like I remember the last season I watched, the person who won was like this like, uh, she was just a hardworking mom. She had two kids. Uh, she wanted to open her own restaurant, but never had the like the means to. And she was like so talented, and it was just like she was trained herself. And it was just really cool to see like someone like have that platform then to succeed and have the resources, and then you know have these mentors who are like helping them. Like they're like the people who didn't win. Even they were like, I know you didn't win, but like we would like you to come train in my restaurant like it's just really cool because it's like giving them opportunities but it's like while it's not as friendly as great fish show it still has that friendly home cook aspect which yeah. I, I like you know i don't really like the yelling and screaming at people like we don't need that we got enough of that in our lives <laughs> and it certainly as someone who doesn't really cook a lot it doesn't make me want to cook <laughs> right. right exactly you're like uh, is this what's gonna happen every time I walk in the kitchen? Uh, yeah, no, I don't. I don't do that. Um, I love, which I feel like this is kind of what you said about why you like baking, is that, like, I like that, it, I'm, I'm noticing right now that there's, like, cooking shows tend to be more, like, intense, but, like, baking shows are, like, yay! <laughs> and, like, yeah. sweet and happy. And is that, yeah. is that part of why you like baking so much? I think so. It feels a little happier. It, it also is, you can do so much with it. Like, I can't do so much with it, but, like, in theory, you could do so much with it. Like, with decorating, um, I always joke because growing up, my best friend and I used to bake together, and obviously it was, like, usually, like, a box cake or whatever. But, like, she hated the baking part and just wanted to decorate, and I hated the decorating part because I was so bad at it. So we usually just would, like, <laughs> I'd be like, all right, I'll take, it, I'll take charge on, like, the the baking and the mixing and the you know timing it out in the oven and she's like great I will ice this cake let's go so 
yeah, I've never been one to be like, let's decorate this, make it beautiful, but I appreciate everyone who can do it, which yeah. is why baking's so cool. Um, and yeah, it does feel more friendly. Um, there are some that aren't, but not that they're not friendly, they just have more of a com competitive side to it, I think. Uh, so you mentioned too that, are you, so are you vegan? Yeah. Um, and gluten-free too? Right? Yeah, so I, make, to make a long story short, I like denied the fact that I uh, was probably lactose intolerant for a long time. Uh, so then I like finally went and was like, I should probably figure this out. And the doctor's like, yeah, don't eat gluten. Also don't eat dairy if it makes your stomach hurt. And I was like, great, cool. So I'm like, not like allergic, but shouldn't eat it. So that was like four years ago, five years ago. Um, but like being dairy free is hard, especially when you love cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, so I struggled with that for a bit, but now, and then eventually I just decided, I was like, you know what? I didn't really like meat. I really only ate like dairy that made me feel sick and the occasional eggs. So I was like, you know what? Bye. So I went vegan. Um, and that was about like three years ago. Um, and that's not to say I haven't like cheated occasionally where it's like, oh no, this piece of bread made is made with like an egg in it, but it's the only gluten-free bread I have. Like, you know, yeah. I'm going to starve myself. Um, but I do try to, I don't cook meat. I don't cook with dairy. I don't cook with gluten, which is the hard one. Um, mm. But, you know, it's, I got used to it. It's three years now. It's going strong. Uh, yeah, heck yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not as bad as people, I think, when they first hear it, it's like, you don't eat anything. All you can eat is like leaves and grass. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, there's, there's other options. Um, I mean, the hardest part was the dairy. So like people who are like going vegan, I think like, or going vegetarian, like vegetarian, I feel like is easier because it's like, all right, I'm getting rid of meats, which some people love, but some people are like fine getting rid of or eating in moderation. The cheese is like, and the milk and the ice cream is like, the sad part. Yeah. Like, we all want cheese. Uh, and that was, I think, the hardest part for me. But once I finally was like, Autumn, you can't physically eat it. Get a grip. Like, I was fine. So, yeah, now I try and bake gluten-free and vegan, which doesn't work. <laughs> um, it does for some things, but not for, like, breads or cakes as well or croissants. Oh. Croissants. No, I feel really bad. I tried once to make croissants with my friend who was visit visiting from the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was like, yeah, let's make croissants. And I was like, great, I have to make them gluten-free and vegan. And she's like, all right, like you, you, you know what to do. Let's just do it. I was like, all right. They were so bad. And we both tried them. Like, they didn't rise. They were just, I don't, I don't even know what they were. They were... I don't even know if I have a picture somewhere. Like, I really want to find one and send it to you. Like, so sad looking. Uh, and she was like, I'm not going to eat this. And I was like, no, 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 don't eat it. I'm going to try and eat it. And I tried and I really couldn't. It was tragic. So needless to say, if anyone knows how to make gluten-free vegan croissants, let me know because I really want one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just want to ask to clarify about like the um because I've been trying to go vegetarian like, over the past few months, um for like a mix of reasons, um like a mix of like climate change and and uh, yeah, there's, there's there was something about like the BLM movement that like made me think about animals too and how we mistreat them and stuff and so like I've been trying to go vegetarian. If anything, I'll just eat chicken, um because like you said you cheat sometimes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's sometimes you like, we live in New England. Sometimes I got to eat a piece of fish, you know, like yeah. that's what there is, you know, like you yeah. can't get mad at yourself. Right. Yeah. That's totally, I'm, I'm definitely learning that, um, with it. Um, but too, I know that for, at least with like my parents, cause I'm like living at home with family, they've confused vegetarian with vegan and thinking that I'm just not eating like anything Any. made from animals and I'm like no that's not what it is <laughs> I can have I can eat more than you think I can and then do with like the gluten thing because it's a fairly like recently like popularized I don't know popular is 
is like the right word, but like more common thing of having like a gluten intolerance or an allergy. And so I don't really know what gluten's in. So I was wondering if you could clarify those terms oh. for me, if not anyone else that's listening. <laughs> oh, I feel like I still, I mean, it's been like four or five years and I still have to, my parents still are trying to figure out what I can and cannot eat. So gluten is like wheat. Um, so anything with like a wheat product, um, think like pastas, breads, uh, desserts mostly cause they're like wheat flour. Um, what else can't I eat? Um, a lot of like condiments, like sauces oh. have like anything with soy sauce. Soy sauce has wheat in it. So I have to always get like a gluten-free soy sauce. Um, Certain other grains like uh, barley is not gluten free. Um, oats, I have to buy gluten free oats, and it's not because oats themselves have gluten, it's because they're usually processed with other gluten things. And normally I'm fine, like I can touch a piece of bread and I won't die. Um, but with certain things like oats, for example, like cross contaminations, like a very high likelihood that you're gonna get that. So I'd rather buy the safe ones than get sick. Uh, yeah, so let's kind of like just a lot of wheat products. Um, I can eat a lot of rice and potatoes, love those. Um, yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of, uh, it's hard because it's a lot of reading labels now, um, which isn't a bad thing. Um, means I know what's in my food, I guess, but yeah. it just, it was hard to adjust for sure. Like if anyone is like, just becoming gluten-free or just becoming dairy-free or is trying to not eat X, Y, and Z. It's hard at first because you're like everything, like things you think would be fine are not. Um, and it's just cause you gotta read those labels and they don't make it easy. Sometimes those labels are really small and then very confusing and they use these weird words, but. True, it's so true. Oh my gosh. So, so what was your experience? And I feel like this is like the big, oh, if there was a list of bullet points, this is like your big bullet point of like, in terms of baking, like what are the challenges that come up when it comes to like being vegan yeah. and gluten free? You know Let me grab this stuff and I'll show. So in terms of baking, obviously like flours have to be gluten free. Um, so if you're using gluten free flour, it's not like regular wheat flour and with wheat flour, you have gluten in it and the gluten is the binding agent. So basically when you're making bread, the wheat, and I mean the gluten in the wheat flour is what helps it get that bready consistency. It's what helps it like uh, rise it uh, when you want it to form air pockets, it helps with that. Um, so there's a lot that gluten does for baking, which is wonderful. Um, but when you can't eat it, uh, you don't have obviously that binding agent. So with gluten-free flours, you have oftentimes have to blend a bunch of different flours together to get a mix that could resemble something of wheat flour. Um, so if I, oh, you know what? I got a bag. If I pull out this one, this has sweet rice flour, whole grain brown rice flour, potato starch, whole grain sorghum flour, tapioca flour, and xanthan gum. And xanthan gum is another like thickening binding agent that you often find in gluten-free blends, but also in like condiments. And it's like kind of a, just like a thickening um, thing. But yeah, so flours have to be like a weird blend and you can make your own, but it just gets expensive. Um, that's the other thing. Gluten-free is expensive for whatever reason. Sorry, I have an allergy and I have to spend more money now. Like what? <laughs> Anyways. Um, so that's one of the things. Um, the other thing is I'm using like, I have to use dairy-free products. Um, so I can't use eggs. Uh, so oftentimes like eggs are another like binding agent mm -hmm. in your baking. Um, so I use flax meal. Do you know what like flax seeds are? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, so it's a little, like, seed. Um, and they grind it into, like, a, a meal, so it's kind of like a floury type thing. And you basically take a tablespoon of that plus three tablespoons of water and just kind of let it sick, and it turns into this, like, thick, I don't know if I can sp not spill it, but it's, like, this thicky mush stuff. And it's actually, like, like, if you 
when you make it, it like feels like thick and sticky. And that's what's gonna help bind it when you don't have an egg. And I have vegan butter, looks like normal butter. Oh, cool. Vegan butters are pretty accessible now, which is fun. Yeah, and then obviously like non-dairy milk, which I find works fine. Sugar, white sugar is technically, you have to get a certain white granulated sugar because the way they make, the way they bleach the sugar is actually not vegan. Um, and I forget the exact, I think it has something to do with like bones that diet. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember, but I know it's not vegan. <laughs> yeah, so the bleached like normal white sugar, I know is like people are like, it's not vegan, don't do it. Sometimes I use it because that's all I have. And uh, like I said, not gonna, you know, make myself crazy over it. Um, but yeah, that's a, uh, that's something else. Too. Just a lot. You gotta like really like retrain your brain. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like it. There's like a lot. There's so much to learn about it. <laughs> it sounds like, and it's like sticks, especially because like like I'm making the choice to try to eat different. Whereas like like you said with like how stuff if you're trying to go gluten free cost more, like you just you're like you said it too. Like your body just can't like tolerate certain things. And it's like this whole other way, which I've just, that was like another thing I realized a few months ago is how weird it is that like, we've just decided that like cow's milk is like just like the milk that we drink, right? that we even drink milk. Um, but like specifically cow's milk, that's just milk. Like we don't say like cow's milk when we're going to like the store to buy it. Oh. It's like all this weird stuff that has just been normalized when in, in some cases, some people like can't even physically handle it. <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> It's funny because, I mean, I could, Katie, I could go on about this, but it's, it's funny because it's like milk, cow's milk is obviously like the cow produces it, like mama cow makes it, right. or baby cow, uh, not for us. So like all the ingredients in there uh, and like the vitamins and minerals that are in there are for the growth of a calf. And calves, as you know, are grow into something quite larger than us. Um, yeah. So obviously the hormones and everything in there are not like geared toward what we need, but we've decided it is. It's so weird. And there's so much stuff like that. That's just like, why have we decided that's a thing that we eat? Especially nowadays, there's so much in food that we don't even know like what's in it, like chemicals and stuff to like make it sellable. And it's just like, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Yeah. And there's something icky about it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of rules that, or lack of rules for the like FDA and what you're supposed to put in the labels actually. So it's just, there's a lot of like uncertainty. There's some, I think there's some countries that like have stricter regulations. Um, but like, yeah, you never, like it may say like the breakdown of like, oh, it's 25% of your daily intake, but like it, it, there's a margin of it being off. Mm -hmm. um, so that, yeah, there's just a lot of processed food that just like, I'm like, what is in that, you know? Yeah. But then I'm like, also like, it tastes so good. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's tough. Our human yeah. brains are like, oh, but it's yummy. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, pros and cons, pros and cons. Uh, let me start baking cookies. Sorry. Um, I got distracted. I brought a, it feels official. Yeah, apron. <laughs> it felt right. It's a cool apron. Thanks. I, uh, got it for Christmas one year. Cool. So these cookies are going to take like two seconds. Real easy, which is fun. So first, we don't start with oats. First, I'm just going to take some sugar. So in here, I already put brown sugar and white sugar. That isn't vegan. Sorry, everyone. Mm -hmm. Vegan right yeah, here. Um, I didn't have it. Whatever. It happens. it happens. So that's that. Um, there's also baking soda in there. Um, I probably should have put that in later, but it's okay. Uh, we'll make it work. And then I have my butter um, that I already measured out. I use my fork for my egg and scrape it. I'm not going to use my fork for my egg and scrape it. That doesn't work. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's not gonna work. Okay, so that's my butter. It's very milky because I left it out because it's empty. Um, 
And I'm kind of following your recipe, like I said, but also I'm a firm believer in not following a recipe, which is probably why things come out awful half the time. Um, you know, creative freedoms. Um, so you just kind of, I don't know. Um, so far, I just want to double check. It's just been butter and sugar so far. Yeah, butter, white sugar, brown sugar. Um, and honestly, like I looked at the back of the Trader Joe's oats bag I have that's gluten free, and it was like gluten free oatmeal. By the way, these are oatmeal cookies. Oh, cool. um, probably should have prefaced that. They kind of feel like a trail mix cookie because they are also going to have chocolate chips and sunflower seeds in them and peanut butter. Um, so not not safe uh, this time. I forgot you didn't eat nuts. So had I known, I would have just. Uh, gone with the classic chocolate chip, but um, I'm sure this could be done with like any nut butter too, like not nut butter, seed butter. Um, mm. Could have done this with sun butter. Oh, what's you, the, um, what's it called? There's like wow butter, I think it's called. It's like made of like soy, I think. Yeah, I've never tried it. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I, again, I don't have a point of reference for what regular peanut butter tastes like, but <laughs> it was, it was yummy. It seemed like it. <laughs> um, so then I put in I don't know, what do I do next? I think this. I'll just put my fake egg in. Um, the formerly cracking egg. This is all goopy. Um, fun. Um, and then I'll just put, I never measure out vanilla because I'm a rebel. Uh, no, um, you're <laughs> supposed to put a teaspoon or something. I truly always eyeball. I eyeball a lot, which is probably why, like I said, probably why things come out strange. We'll give that a quick mix. Oh. Does eyeballing take the pressure off a little bit? Like it takes the, it removes the stress aspect a little bit more maybe? I think yes and no, because- Oh, I, oh yeah, I, I can see how, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I find it fine. Like I, cause I think I just like, I know what a half cup looks like for the most part. Like if I need, obviously some things I don't know, but like if I'm like, oh, I need a half cup of blueberries for this muffin. Like I know what a half cup kind of looks like. Um, and like with vanilla, like I know what like a teaspoon or a tablespoon kind of looks like. But like, I know for example, like when I cook with like Steven and we're following a recipe and I'm like, yeah, just like a splash. And he's like, what does that mean? Like, <laughs> a splash, like my splash might be different from your splash. And I'm like, sure, but just a splash is fine. Um, so yes and no, <laughs> I don't mind it, but. So I'm gonna add peanut butter. Like I said, you can do like sun butter, wow butter, pumpkin butter. I saw watermelon seed butter. Oh. I've never tried it. It was like $12 and I was like, yeah, I'll stick to my peanut butter that I know I can eat, but tempted. Um, I don't know how it would taste though. I'm curious. See, that's the other fun thing about these diets is that there's so many like other foods out there that you don't like think about i know like, like watermelon seed butter even put like the pumpkin seed butter i'm like what that's a thing cool <laughs> right uh pumpkin seed butter is pretty good too i just love pumpkin seeds um anything pumpkin fall pumpkin yes yeah happy fall everybody Woo. <laughs> um oats so like obviously cookies normally have flour I, like I said, went with the oats route, so it's just gonna be like an oat cookie. Um, so not quite the normal cookie texture. I just am like a, I'm an oat gal, you know? I was just gonna ask you what your favorite like type of cookie is. My favorite type of cookie? Um, probably an oatmeal chocolate chip, mm -hmm. which is similar to what I'm making. Um, I'm definitely, I think that's, what's your favorite? Um, I mean, my heart wants to go to the, the very ever traditional chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also like, although to be real, like we have chocolate chips, like chocolate chip cookies in our house and I still eat Oreos every night. So. <laughs> Oreos are good. I haven't, so Oreos are vegan. How fun. Love that. And I'm free, so I can't eat them. But uh, mm. they are vegan. So all my vegan friends are like, Oreos. And I'm like, cool. Um, sorry, this is sunflower seeds and chocolate chips. I already measured out. I put way more chocolate chips than it needs because <laughs> you can never have too many, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, 
And now we kind of have, sorry, I've been like mixing on my lap. You can't even see with this coffee cup. Um, just seemed easier because I'm too short for this counter. So now we have a dough and I'll put some on the tray and then we bake. And honestly, because what's cool about like vegan baking, I mean, I wouldn't with normal like flour, but because this is oats, you could just eat this. Oh, cool. I didn't even think of that. Whoa. There's nothing, and half the time, this is actually very similar to like, I make like, I call them like oat balls. I don't know. They're just like oats and peanut butter and honey and whatever else I want in them. And you just put them in little balls and I put them in the freezer. Um, and then I kind of let them thaw before I eat them. But then it's just a little, a little like ball thing. Like dessert and you don't have to bake them. Um, super easy, super fun, uh, like good snack. I don't know. Uh, I, you're reminding me, I think I must have found it like on Pinterest or something of another, of a recipe that I made a few times of um, a similar kind of thing, yeah. Of little, little, nice little balls. They got like oats. I think it was like coconut, like mm -hmm. sugar powder or something. Yeah. Um, chocolate chips in them and in the, in bananas, I think. And it was just a nice little like, num num. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, anything like non-baking desserts because you don't have to bake them. Uh, and there's a lot of good ones out there. I mean, sometimes I find like banana can be like, oh gosh, I'm making a mess. Uh, can be like overpowering in desserts or like non-baked desserts because then it just tastes like a banana and I'm like, I could have just eaten a banana. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I do like it and yeah, like the oat things I've done banana with. Uh, what else? Oh, I made like breakfast cookies that were just like mashed banana and I don't even know what else, but it was like not even a cookie. <laughs> um, but I pretended it was. Um, oh, so these are going to bake for like 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, they look like this. Very good shot. I just did drop cookies, meaning... You take two spoons and you drop them, uh, as opposed to like rolling them out. Like some cookies, you want to make a ball and flatten it. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, these I'm not. Just plop them. Yeah, just plop them. They bake. Ovens at three fifty. Super easy. I can make the rest later. I'll just make a couple for now. I'll eat a spoonful of this because when you bake or cook, I know you don't do it as much. Do you make a mess like I do? Oh, okay. I this is a good this is a good thing to talk about. My um which is funny, whenever I like cook, I ask like my dad helps me because he's kind of like the designated like cook of our house. And, always right. And so uh but still somehow my mom has got it ingrained in me of like cleaning up as you go um which is a thing I take pride in and a thing that I think I'm I'm at least a little bit good at when I'm cooking <laughs> as much as I don't know what else is going on I know like to just clean up and keep everything moving that's yeah. what I appreciate about about like cooking and baking is just like it's just keep it moving yeah there's a clear goal of like getting it in the oven or like getting it on the plate and I like that yeah I try to keep neat, and then I feel like I still end up making a mess, and then it really bothers me, so then I try and clean it up, but then I just make a mess of the sink, and then it's just like this, like, <laughs> downward spiral, uh, which is why I love cooking with Steven, because he actually is a great dishwasher, um, as in he just, like, volunteers, and he'll be like, all right, you finish that, and I'll wash dishes, which is, like, great teamwork, so having a little, like, which obviously I can do myself, but having like a sous chef is like, yeah. one person tackles one thing, one person tackles the other. Oh, you want to measure this out while I stir this? Great. Like, definitely helpful. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That was, yeah, like when me and my dad were making dinner last night, that was the same thing we said. And he was like, I'll be your sous chef. I'm like, heck yeah. Um, so the cookies I checked on, they're still a little soupy. Um, important thing about baking is setting a timer, which I didn't do. Um, so, you know, we're just going to keep an eye on it. Uh, I think it's been about 10 minutes, so maybe two more.
if not, this recipe is garbage. And like I told you, gluten-free vegan baking is not always, <laughs> not always good. So oh my Steve, gosh, if that's what it ends up at the end of this, that I'm sorry, but that would be hilarious. That would be truly amazing. Like, uh, I would want nothing more. Um, <laughs> it's funny because like, it truly is like, I will follow a recipe for, I don't know, let's go with brownies. And I make the brownies and they come out great. I'm like, awesome. And the next time I follow the exact same recipe and they are awful. And I'm like, what happened? I use the same ingredients. I use the same, it's, it's just so finicky. It's like mm. you put one thing off and you're just, uh, I don't, yeah, it, it was bizarre, very bizarre. Yeah, that's always the vibe I've gotten from whenever I've watched Great British Baking Show is like, yeah, especially especially when it comes to time and everything and how long to like leave things in the oven and pr- what's it called? Proof? Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing <laughs> until I watched the show and I still don't know I, if I totally get like what it is. I am a, not a huge like bread baker because like I said, gluten free just doesn't breads are hard to make. Like, I tried to make pita bread once, which is like fairly simple to make in normal terms. Uh, and it was like eating coasters. Like it was oh. awful. Uh, but no, so like proofing is like, they put it in the drawer, like, yeah, they cover it and they put it in the drawer and it's at a certain temperature. So I don't think it's like exactly room temp. I think it's a little warmer and it helps like dough rise. Uh, I think it does it a little quicker than it normally would just sitting like at room temp on your counter. Um, because usually when you're doing breads, you have to, you have to make the dough and then you have to let it rise and then you have to knock it down and then you have to like let it rise again. And if you're doing other breads, you have to laminate it. So you have to like fold it in butter, but you can't melt the butter because then otherwise you don't get these fun flaky layers. It's bread is like a science and I'm like yeah. really awe of bread makers. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's always what I think when I'm, when I'm watching the show and I have to make bread. I'm like, how? <laughs> how? That's and I think, hard. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, I know that, like, a lot of people start with sourdough, which is, like, was the big thing during quarantine, like I said, that I never did, but uh, it's easier, actually, I think, because it really is just, like, well, it's easier in that you don't have to, like, worry about, like, this, like, laminating or this proofing as much. Um, but you do have to like, you literally are creating like, a, you're feeding like, a, you call it a starter. And it's like, you have like this dough basically like fermenting kind of like in a jar. And that's what gives it the sour taste. Uh, but you have to feed your starter. So it's like feeding a little pet. So you like, <laughs> have to like add flour and then like you use part of your starter and then you discard part of your starter and then you have some of it in a jar still and you put it in the fridge or you put it on the counter and like, I don't quite understand it because there's a lot, in theory, it's easier to make the bread, but to make the starter and keep up with the starter is just like, it blows my mind and I don't quite get it. Uh, um, so these look done. They look a little flat and squished together. So interesting. They look <laughs> interesting. interesting to say the least. So they look flat oh, they are. Cool. Oh, those are nice and big. Yeah. Um, Cool, so I could take you off. Um, we could have Steven try a soupy one, because that'd be funny. Because <laughs> um, he'll be one of the taste testers. And he's usually pretty honest about what I make, which is nice. Um, he'll tell me if he doesn't like it. Uh, I'd like to think it's good, but you know. It looks good. It sounds good. Right? In fact, I was like, should I make a normal cookie or like this cookie? He was like, make this cookie. So if it's a fail, it's all his fault. <laughs> no. Um, if it's a fail, blame it on Steven. Yeah, obviously. Steven's um, his boyfriend too, if you didn't know. That too. Oh yeah, he's also, he's like, you know, he was also on the podcast. That's uh. Yeah, he's, like I said before, he's the travel episode. I think that's number eight. Yeah. The travel Here's a here's a good transition. That one's gonna be up on the YouTube channel, Famous Secret Agent, which Autumn 
is a part of autumn you want to talk about that that could be we could do the plugs now and then finish with the cookies <laughs> yeah so famous secret agent is um uh you know a youtube channel we created and it's a group of us hey steven you can come join mm -hmm. um they're a little warm so we're just talking uh so steven this say? video brought to you by hydro flask oh my gosh stop <laughs> no it's not <laughs> It's Famous Secret Agent is a group of us uh, with a YouTube channel. We're creating a bunch of content uh, in the hopes of bringing laughter and joy to your lives in the time where you may not have as much laughter and joy as you normally would. You can subscribe. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on TikTok. Don't tell me how to use it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we are really excited. All right, Steven, so they're a little like soupy for whatever reason. Yeah, they look it. <laughs> but they look like yummy. Mm. I'm not saying they don't look well, As I was yummy. saying to Katie, if we don't like, like you can eat the dough. It's not, but you can't. Oh yeah, it's crazy. It's not like it's in the like, Because oh, I don't put eggs, because that's what awesome I'll be. Anyway, like I used to eat cookie dough raw regardless. So I don't, you can eat a raw egg and be okay. Just in moderation, right? Yeah. I, I, would not, I, would I used to put in smoothies. I used to put in smoothies. All right, here's your cookie, sir. Oh. It's probably warm. No, 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 no. It's very thin. Okay, first impression. Wait, Katie, we have to give you one. Oh, here, here. Here you go. <laughs> oh, look, it's a cookie. <laughs> okay, so upon. First, um, first impressions, it is a very thin, I would call this a paper thin cookie. Um, it's warm to the touch. Well, it has like a, let it cool a little more, but. Yeah, okay. it, it has like a crisp bottom, but it seems to be malleable, as you can see here. I can, fold, I can fold it and it's not totally broken. Like watch, excuse me, for those viewing at home. It's not <laughs> totally broken. That was folded a moment ago. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, wow. And uh, so here we go. <laughs> I'm very interested because of the sesame seed portion. Sesame, it's sunflower. Sunflower seed, excuse me. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. You thought we were having sesame this entire time? Hmm. Okay. So it's yummy. Kind of weird. It's yummy, but I feel like I'm eating bird food. <laughs> <laughs> like the sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, truly kind of taste like, or not bird. that I've not that I've consumed bird food, but. We do give sunflower seeds to our birds in our bird feeder, so fair enough. <laughs> Interesting. Would I make this again? No. Probably not. <laughs> Will I, I eat it? Eat it now? Yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. I don't think it's delicious. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any Oreos? <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Steven. Thanks for insulting my cookie. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Autumn, for being on the podcast. I love this episode so much. Right? Wow! <laughs> Sorry, I have water in my mouth right when he did that. Um, <laughs> Was, again, a reference to, thank you, actually, Stephen. This is a great transition. That was a reference to uh, Stephen's episode of the podcast, as I mentioned many times in this episode now, which you can find a respectful conversation. Like Autumn said, some of the episodes are going to be up in video form on Famous Secret Agent on YouTube, um, which you can go to and subscribe to right now. You can find a respectful conversation on SoundCloud as well as Spotify now. Heck yeah. Um, it's easier than you think. I was able to figure it out. I'm proud of myself. Um, you. <laughs> thank you to those of you who have already been listening on Spotify. Um, and to those of you who have been listening on SoundCloud um, even before I got it on Spotify. Um, so yeah, thank you again, Autumn, for being here. Thank you for having me. I had fun. I got a big cookies. Yeah, <laughs> cookies. Um, everyone, go eat a cookie in honor of this episode. Yep. Um, Cool. I think that's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. For Bye.